In early 2013, during the manhunt for Christopher Dorner, at least eight LAPD employees fired over 100 rounds into a vehicle that was a different make, model, and color than that said to be driven by Dorner. Its occupants, two women, 47 and 71 years old, certainly didn't match Dorner's description either. Still, those sitting on the LAPD oversight board ruled that the shooters involved would not be charged with any crimes. These so-called police oversight boards, which are also called civilian review boards or oversight commissions, have been popping up where police brutality becomes really, really apparent. Today, that's pretty much everywhere. Oversight boards are staffed with local residents whose purported job is to rein in out-of-control police practices. Their board members are, surprise surprise, suggested and appointed by a combination of the mayor, the city council, and the local police chief. In larger cities, individuals who sit on these oversight boards are even paid from taxpayer coffers, just like the police, and they tend to hold their meetings at police headquarters. Without question, it is an incestuous relationship. Bureaucrats get to look like they care about transparency while using police oversight boards to distract from the paradox inherent to the policing model, which is that a person who claims the right to initiate force could somehow also provide protection. In New Orleans, after police employees shot and killed a couple of unarmed people from the Danzinger Bridge and then covered it up, an oversight board was created. In Oakland, after it was discovered that police employees there assaulted, planted drugs, and falsified reports as a matter of routine, another was created. Yet New Orleans and Oakland are still riddled with police brutality and chaos. The same is true in LA, Albuquerque, NYC, Cleveland, Detroit, and elsewhere where oversight boards exist. No matter how outspoken, how much impartiality is claimed, or how much authority is said to exist, oversight boards can never stop police brutality, as their very existence gives credence to, rather than undermines, a system founded on coercion. An oversight board, which merely hacks at the branches, cannot remedy the inherent toxicity, which is the root. If the supply of service and protection from your local police outfit isn't satisfactory, don't give the prattle about the need for review boards a second thought. See through the slick salesmanship that only perpetuates an arrangement that places some as the rulers and others as the ruled. Instead, focus on consumer-oriented solutions. Download the Peacekeeper app today to start connecting with people in your community to create emergency response networks and to skill share. These networks can virtually eliminate the need to ever call 911. If you know of well-intentioned police or people considering the policing profession, suggest to them the business model of the Threat Management Center, where protection is actually supplied to customers based on consensual interactions. Furthermore, as police are funded via dollars, consider shifting your own activities to cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. And as always, make it a party by connecting with other cop blockers in your area or by starting a chapter yourself. You'd be surprised by just how many people know that badges don't grant extra rights.